the topic is round robin scheduling algorithm so we'll discuss first of all the theory about this two or three points important points and then we'll discuss this with the help of one numerical see this type of scheduling algorithm is used in multitasking operating system or you can say time sharing operating system we have discussed many types of operating systems the, the, in the, that video we have discussed what is multitasking operating system see let us take one example when you are working on your laptop then at uh, same time you are uh, you know uh, maybe listening uh, songs and uh, at the same time you are surfing on internet and as well as some background processes are also running at the same time so many processes are running and it seems that all the processes are running parallelly but it is not true it is based on the time quantum every process the operating system will allocate uh, some uh, unit of time to each process maybe 2 millisecond okay maybe for 2 millisecond uh, the uh, cpu will be allocated to uh, that uh, your process which is uh, running uh, your windows media player and uh, another two, for 2 unit of for 2 unit of time or 2 millisecond some background processes is running maybe that maintaining the system clock of your laptop something like this okay and uh, this is the switching between these processes see and this switching is so fast uh, that uh, it looks like that all the processes are running parallelly ek saath ho sare process run ho rahi hai but aisa nahi hota hai that is not actually true this is what the multitasking operating system or you can say time sharing operating system so in those kind of operating system this uh, sh for scheduling the processes which kind of uh, scheduling algorithm is used that is round robin scheduling algorithm okay so this algorithm is uh, similar to first come first serve but with some time quantum one extra thing is what with some time quantum and this algorithm is what the mode of this algorithm is what it is always preemptive scheduling algorithm okay now what is this time quantum you can say time quantum is uh, the time or the period of time for which a process is allowed to run uninterrupted in a preemptive multitasking operating system in one go okay in this case it is not like that we pick one process based maybe based on some uh, maybe the criteria of arrival time or burst time and uh, we will complete that process and after that another process will be picked and complete its execution it is not like that we pick one process the criteria is what the time quantum plus arrival time also okay arrival time plus time quantum the criteria fine we will pick one process which has been arrived in the ready queue will will uh, the cpu will be located to that process that process will continue its execution till the time quantum expires maybe it's two unit of time three unit of time four unit of time okay for that time quantum that process will continue its execution and after that if that process uh, has been completed then it's fine it will go to the terminated state terminated state but still after the expire of the time quantum still it needs some uh, time to complete it, uh, its execution then again that process will go to the ready queue and another process will be picked and cpu would be allocated to that process okay so this would be done in a you know round robin fashion or you can say circular fashion so in this case we will also maintain one ready queue and then we will draw the gantt chart fine so main advantage of this algorithm is what it would uh, give you the deterministic response time to each process or you can say in case of the average response time it is one of the best algorithm now let us take this example we are given five processes arrival time of these five processes and this is the burst time of these processes we are just considering the cpu bound processes none of the process will go for any io device during the, uh, the its execution okay see now we will also maintain a ready queue if you will maintain a ready queue also in this case along with the gantt chart then there will there would be very less chance that uh, you will get it you will get the answer wrong okay so i highly recommend you to maintain a ready queue in this case in round robin while solving the numericals on round robin scheduling okay now the gantt chart would be started we assume that it would be started from the time zero along with this gantt chart we will maintain a ready queue also fine so at first in the ready queue see the criteria is what arrival time 
arrival time plus time quantum. It's not like check out the time quantum only and uh, just uh, draw the Gantt chart. You have to check the arrival time also. Now suppose in this case the arrival time or you can say the time quantum or time slice which is given is that is 3 unit of time. So here time quantum given is 3 unit of time and arrival time is given this one. Now at first at 0 P1 has arrived in ready Q. Now suppose in ready Q we have P1 okay at time 0. Now only one process is there at time 0 in ready Q we will delete this process from ready Q and this should be CP would be allocated to this process. For how much unit of time now the criteria is arrival time we have checked plus time quantum now time quantum is 3 unit of time. So, we will allocate the CPU to P1 for only 3 unit of time. Right? Also check the burst time of this process. The total burst time of P1 is 5. Okay. Still this process require 5 unit of time to complete its execution. Fine, because CPU is allocated for only 3 unit of time. Okay. Now, at 3 this P1 would be removed from the CPU and again go to the ready queue. But before putting this P1 again into the ready queue, you have to check maybe there would be another process, another processes which have been arrived. So fine, while this P1 was running. So check out the arrival time of another processes. See arrival time of P2 is 5. So this one is not there in ready queue. Now, Arrival time of P3 is 1. So while P1 was running, so sometime at 1, P3 has arrived. So P3 is now in ready queue. Now this would come at 6 and this would come at 8. So before 3, only one process has arrived and uh, went into the ready queue. Now at 3, P1 would be removed from the CPU and again P1 will go to ready queue. Now check out the ready queue. Next process is P3. We will remove the process P3 and allocate CPU to P3. For how many unit of time? Check out the time quantum for 3 unit of time. Now see it's not like that after P1, P2 is there so we will write P2 here. You have to check out arrival time also. Maybe sometimes they can give you uh, they will not always give you the time arrival time in increasing order like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like this. Okay. Maybe the arrival time of P2 is C5 and P3 is 1. So P3 will come before P2. This is just an example. Okay. Now see P3. P3 will require 7 unit of time, but we can allocate CPU to P3 for only 3 unit of time in one go. After that, we will remove this process forcefully because the version is what preemptive version. So 3 for 3 unit of, for three unit of time that is 6. So the remaining burst time of this one is 7 minus 3 that is 4. P3 still needs 4 unit of time for, complete, for completing its execution. Now update the ready queue also. Now it is not like that at 6 we will remove this P3 and we will put the P3 in ready queue. Maybe before this P3 while P3 was running maybe some another process would have come in the ready queue. So check out that also before 6. See yeah at 5 P2 came at 5. Now see at 6 P4 came and at 6 this would be preempted. So see this maybe uh, you can have uh, you can say that uh, first of all we will write P3 and then we will write P4 or another option is first write P4 then write P3 because time is same. At 6 the new process came and at 6 also we preempt this process from the CPU. So the funda is what if this kind of situation is there then we will always put the newly arrived process in the ready queue first. This is the condition fine. So we will put P4 here and then we will preempt this P3 and again this P3 would be in the ready queue. This process will come at 8. So this is not in the ready queue now. Now next P1 would be removed from ready queue and CPU would be allocated to P1. P1 would need 5 unit of time but 
we can allocate CPU for 3 unit of time. So 6 plus 3 is 9 and the remaining is what? 2 unit of time. Fine. Now at 9 P1 will go and again will be there in the ready queue. But before putting this P1 in this ready queue, we will check is there any process who has come while this P1 was running. Yes, we have one process. While the time was 8, P5 came in the ready queue. And now P1 will go and P1 will be in the ready queue. Now next is P2. In the ready queue, we will delete P2 and CPU would be allocated to P2. Check out the burst time for P2 is 3, sorry 2. So we cannot say uh, they, that uh, 9 plus 3 will allocate this CPU for 3 unit of time. 9 plus 3 is 12. You have to check also the burst time. P2 will require only the 2 unit of time. So we will allocate CPU to P2 for 2 unit of time. Okay. Then now P2 is done. We will not put P2 again in the ready queue because P2 is done with its execution and it is now terminated. Now next is P now we will run this P4. For how many unit of time? For 3 unit of time because time quantum is 3 as well as check the burst time. See P4 would need only 3 unit of time for completing its execution. Okay. So 11 plus 3 is 14. Now P4 will not go back to the ready queue. Why? So because P4 has completed, P4 got completed because it required only 3 unit of time for its execution. Okay. Now next process is P3. Now check. The burst time for P3 uh, is still it need 4 unit of time but we can allocate CPU for only 3 unit of time because time quantum is 3, 14 plus 3 is 17. Still it will need one more unit of time for completing its execution. Now it will go back to the ready queue because it is still left with one unit of time. Okay, P3 will go back to the ready queue. Now while P3 was running, uh, we didn't check is there any process has come to the ready queue. Why? So because all the processes, ha all the processes have come till the time 8. Okay. So no process will come now. Now P3 will again, again back to the ready queue. Now next process is P5. Delete this P5, allocate CPU to this P5. Uh, the required burst time is 5. So, for 3 unit of time, we will execute this and then when again put this 2 into, two, um, again put the P5 into ready queue. 17 plus 3 is 20. Now, P5 will again back to ready queue. Now, next is P1. Now, the remaining time of P1 is what? Only 2 unit of time it will require. So, we will continue, we will run this P4 for only 2 unit of time, 20 till 22. Now, P1 is also done. Now, next is P3. Now, P3 would require only 1 unit of time. Okay. Now, we will run this P3 for only 1 unit of time, 22 plus 20, 1, 23. Now, P3 is also done and the remaining is P5. So, P5. See, now you have to update this burst time also. P5, once CPU is allocated to P5 for 3 unit of time. So, remaining time was 2. And now it will uh, need, it need only 2 unit of time. That is why we will run this for 2 unit of time. 23 plus 2 is 25. So, no process is there in the ready queue. Now, ready queue is empty. So, we will stop this round robin algorithm. So, this is what the gain chart of round robin algorithm. Now, you have to find out the average waiting time, turnaround time and response time also. Now, the completion time for each process is what? Check out for P1. Uh, for completion time, you can check out from the right side of the gain chart. See, at last we have a P1 here only. So, to the right, check out the time to the right of this P1 that is 22. Completion time of P1 is 22. Now, for P2, here we have P2 that is 11. For P3, here we have P3 that is 23 completion time. For P4, here we have P4 completion time is 14. For P5, it's 25. Now, what is the turnaround time? Turnaround time would be what? Completion time minus arrival time. 
completion time 22, arrival time 0, 22 minus 0, 11 minus 5, 6, 23 minus 1, 22, 14 minus 6, that is 8, 25 minus 8, that is 17. Now next is waiting time. Now waiting time would be what? Turn around time minus burst time. Turn around time is 22 minus burst time. See burst time will not check the updated burst time. You have to uh, you have to check the, the total burst time, the original burst time which, which was given in the question that was 8. So 22 minus 8 that would be 14. 6 minus 2, 4. 22 minus 7 that would be 15. 8 minus 3 that is 5 and 17 minus 5 that is 12. Now response time would be Check out for P1, at what time CPU was allocated first time to P1 after the arrival? At 0 only and arrival time is 0, 0 minus 0, 0. P2, see at 9 CPU was allocated to P2. So we cannot say 9 minus, minus 0 and that is 9. You have to check out arrival time of that process also. Arrival time of P2 is what? 5. So 9 minus 5, fine, that is 4. For P3, the first time CPU was allocated at time 3, arrival time of P3 is 1, 3 minus 1, that is 2. For P4, first time CPU was allocated at time 11, arrival time is 6, 11 minus 6, that is 5. For P5, first time at 17, CPU was allocated to P5, 17 minus arrival time is 8, so that would be 9. And if you want to calculate the average, then do the total of these and divide by the number of processes that is 5. So the answer would be, so I guess the average turnaround, turnaround time would be 15, average waiting time would be 10 and average response time would be 4. So if I talk uh, about the advantages and drawbacks of this round robin algorithm. So in advantages, you can write that it would give the deterministic response time. Or you can say in case of the average response time, it is one of the best algorithm. Okay. In case of response time but drawback is what we cannot say it is better than fcfs see when the case is if time quantum is very large suppose time quantum in this case is 10 then in that case this algorithm round robin will work as first come first serve same as first come first serve you can apply this round robin taking the time quantum 3 on this numerical and then you will solve you solve this numerical with first come first serve you will get the same answer same turnaround time and waiting time and response time so if you say that we take the time quantum very small we say that we take it one so that response time would be increased so uh, you you can say that uh, more and more processes would get the uh, cpu very soon if time quantum is one but in that case topic is what number of context switching would be increased because when P, uh, the CPU would be allocated to P1, suppose time quantum is 1 for 1 unit of time, then again P1 will go to the ready queue. So, this is known as context switching. So, here you can say context switch, one context switch like this. So, if time quantum is very less, then this number of context switching would be increased and number of context switches will also take some time. Will also, you know, in context switching means what uh, you have to store the, you have to store the current position of this currently running process and load the, uh, you know, uh, status of the next process. So this will also take some time, and in that case, average waiting time would also increase. So we cannot take very large time quantum, and we cannot take very less time quantum. But the yeah, advantages is that it give you uh, the deterministic response time. So somewhere it is written as uh, that idle time quantum is between 10 to 100 milliseconds. It should not be greater than 100, it should not be less than 10 milliseconds, not seconds. Right? So I will see you in the next video, till then bye bye, take care.